let's talk about bike theft because it's become very apparent on how frequent it is since I joined Twitter and also motorcycle groups on Facebook until recently every single day I saw a motorcycle might have been stolen or gone missing and I just think it's ridiculous so well, I saw, so I, there were two days since I joined Twitter that I didn't see you know, stolen motorcycle or motorcycle missing or something like that or damaged and I've been on there for five months, six months that's ridiculous which means that throughout the year I could see probably about 361 bikes go missing or get damaged like there was the, uh, the blood biker his bike well, people tried to nick it, they attempted to steal it and he, you know, rightfully defended himself and they smashed up the front of it but why? what is the point in that? it's ridiculous there was someone recently whose name I have now forgotten I'll probably put it on screen he was involved in a traffic accident not his fault uh, he got taken to hospital and they left his bike by the side of the road. His mate went to go and get the bike afterwards and the bike was gone. It had been stolen right after his accident. Which is just ridiculous. I can't believe it, I really can't. It's just insane. So as you know, if you've been watching long enough, this got nicked. Now I was one of the lucky ones. This got found before I even realized it was stolen. And the damage was literally just to the ignition barrel and the top yoke but still that's you know you can tell it was amateurs because professionals they would have brought a van that they'd have got it in the back of a van and bugged off not walked it a third of a mile down the road i was just lucky people heard the uh, thieves hammering on it and went and confronted them you know they're only little kids well I say little kids they're only teenagers but you know apparently a large group of them so that was enough to scare off the two people who were doing it sadly the thieving bastards never got caught I don't know what the police actually do but hopefully a lot more than what it sounded like because um they had an idea of who it could be and they went and investigated I mean they got CSI out did all the fingerprints and that the problem is most of the fingerprints would be mine and Zojo's and they said, oh yeah, it turned out the uh, person we thought it was was a red herring after we went investigated. I thought, what he really did was you went and asked his mates where he was and they said, hey. Yeah. It's ridiculous. There are ways to deter thieves. Sadly, I didn't do the obvious one when mine got stolen. I, I normally did, but... It's like the obvious one really would be put your chain on or put a chain on it, like a decent one. I've now got an Oxford HD chain, which I put on every night now. Or sometimes during the day if I'm biking somewhere really shit. And uh, yeah, when it got stolen, I had, I can't remember what make it was, but the lock had seized. It had rusted, so I, I'd WD 40 it and it still wasn't moving. So I just to. I didn't want to risk not being able to, to take it off in the morning. Oh, excuse me. I've got bloody hiccups. So I didn't put it on. And then obviously it got nicked. Now, a steering lock will probably add about five seconds onto someone nicking your bike if they want it. So a steering lock don't take much. All you need is a couple of guys to yank some handlebars around and your steering lock's broken. So I wouldn't recommend just using a steering lock. Like I said, I recommend a chain, uh, get an alarm fitted, this has got an alarm fitted, apparently the, uh, the alarm didn't go off for some reason, I don't know why, mind you I was also having battery issues, so, you know, new battery now, alarm definitely works, keeps going off when the wind goes off, um, get, a, get a decent alarm fitted, and if you've got something you can stick on that says there's an alarm fitted, that acts very well as a deterrent, which will stop them touching it at all, because they could lift it off the stand, the alarm will go off and they'll just drop it, which then obviously will still damage your bike. Uh, data tag, which I'm going to get done to this at some point. I've actually got it uh, booked to go in to get a new rear tyre on Monday. So I'm going to see if I can fit a data tag then. That will help. And then if it gets stolen, the police have a tracking number. They can check it. The uh, 
Oh, also you get nice little stickers that, won't, that does not come off. Basically, if I stuck it on this tank, because I got it on, and then a few years down the line I sort of break this bike for parts, because it's you know, more cost efficient than trying to sell it, I couldn't sell the tank without having that little data tag thing on, because it's on there. Morning, please. What is there? Smart water. Smart water's a good one, because they do unique markings on various parts of the bike. Yet again, the police know what these are. And um, if it gets stolen, if they strip it, it's really easy just to, you know, give it a once over with a UV light and it'll tell you where it's from. Which is really nifty. Yeah, again, you get a nice big sticker that says this is protected by smart water. That acts as a deterrent as well. Um, simple things like put a cover over it. If they can't see what it is, and they're not going to want to risk lifting the cover off it, and getting caught just to find out that it's something really shit. So that should stop a few people. You know, it stopped the majority. But saying that, even the most hardened criminal, you could put your bloody wheels in cement and all they do is they detach them and carry the rest of the bike away if they wanted to. You can't get around that. Obviously, if you've got a garage, keep it up to the garage. Um, even then, don't just drive it in, put the side stand down, turn the engine off and then lock it in the garage. Use some protection like a gorilla lock. The gorilla lock? That one where you can attach it to the floor or the wall. If you do that, especially if you can, you know, dig a hole and concrete it in. Because otherwise if it's bolted in, it doesn't take a lot for a guy with a spanner to come in, watch it on holiday, undo it and walk your bike off. You still fit an alarm in the garage. Uh, you can get one of those things you can put against a garage door. I don't know what it's actually called. It's like a bar and like you lift it up and you can open the door and then when your door is shut you, you know, put it down and it locks the door shut. That would be brilliant. It's basically all the advice I can currently think of. I mean, you look online, there's advice everywhere. You know, just if you can keep it out of sight. You know, I think if you think you're being followed home by someone who's acting a bit weird and staying very close behind you, take a really random way home like go past where you live and then double back on yourself and see if they're still there kind of thing uh, and if you're not trusting it go somewhere safe and out in the open and you know call the police or something or just see what they do first right I'll tell you what when I leave work we'll discuss the side effects of having your bike stolen other than having your bike stolen right ta-ta for now all right well that was a busy old day what they don't tell you about when your bike gets stolen, besides the fact that obviously your motorcycle is now gone, is how much the insurance company can screw you over it. It can be a fucking pain in the ass. It, like, there are some companies that will pay out quite quickly, which is quite nice. I sadly don't have an insurance company like that. That was a rare beastie. Um, but some might pay out quite quickly, but the problem is, if the bike then gets found, they might want a certain amount of that money back, or all of it, depending on the condition, which is ridiculous. I know of a guy who worked the system a bit, back ooh, a long time ago now, probably early 90s, late 80s, so, you know, before I even gave two shits about these things, and, uh, yeah, his motorcycle mysteriously disappeared and that was a fairly expensive one and that was fairly brand new and it conveniently turned up behind his mate's shed which is probably why they've started making you pay the money back but it's the psychological thing as well besides the fact that it obviously like depending on the damages depending on your excess like for me it was just faster and easier to do it myself like to get it Done myself instead of going through the insurance because the insurance wanted like 575 quid as an excess. They put my excess up by 75 pounds without letting me know. Thank you very much. And to get this to where they wanted it to be examined, they wanted an extra three. Uh, they wanted to take it somewhere in the country. I can't remember where it was, but it was about 100 miles away. And I was like, "You can fuck off." What the fuck am I supposed to go and collect that? Because they weren't going to give it back. They were going to make me collect it. I was like, I don't have the fucking time for that in my schedule. This is ridiculous. And I said, well, can't I take it to somewhere local to me? You know, because I've got the dealership I bought this from about 25 miles that way. I've got the fucking place I get the tyres and that done who'd have been cheaper to get through that way. 
and there was bloody Boyer's Body Centre who had it in the end and they were another third of a mile away, if that. I think it might be a quarter of a mile away, it's ridiculous. The fact that it was going to be 300 regardless, so they could have charged me 300 quid to get whoever was local to where it was found to go a quarter of a mile up the road. As you can imagine, we told them to fuck off, so it was just easy to do it that way. Uh, but then obviously you've got time, like, like this to me is my main vehicle. If my dad didn't have his bike on the road, we'd have been in the shit. Which we ended up in the shit because his broke down as well. Because one of the petrol stations around here decided that they think people wouldn't notice it if instead of using petrol they'd use white spirits or something like that. And obviously that somewhat didn't work. But what we also don't think about, or what they don't tell you about, is the psychological damage. Ever since this got stolen, they've been recovered, I don't like leaving it without the chain on when it's dark. Or without the alarm on, ever, and the steering lock on. Alright, the steering lock won't do fuck all. I mean, during the day, I sincerely doubt people are going to have the balls to, you know, come along and fucking shake the shit out of it to snap it. I have seen people do it, I've seen... I think there was a video of riding with Tom put up, which is two guys in Australia. Uh, they just walked into a car park, one guy started wailing ten bells of fuck with a screwdriver and a hammer into the ignition barrel, or, you know, to break the steering lock and that, and then they tied a rope to the front of it, and this mate pulled him with a car, and they pulled him down the road. In the middle of daylight. But who's going to go and confront a mental, like, a, he was a fairly muscular dude, with a bloody screwdriver? No one's going to, are they? It makes you wonder. Every time I hear an alarm now, regardless of the fact car alarms don't sound like the alarm that's fitted to this, I panic. I've not been sleeping as well. Now, like, I was sleeping better when it was locked up at the place it was supposed to be repaired at than when I got it back, because I knew that I still hadn't got it back, and then it was locked up somewhere else when they had it. And I got it back, and all I can think is, whoever nicked it is still going to see it, and they're going to do it again, even though the alarm is now definitely working. And I've always got it chained up with a pretty much indestructible chain. So what the hell? If thieves knew the like the way it affects the victim, like if if it's just a toy to you, that's bad enough because your toy's normally going to be fairly expensive or something like that. So when you lose it, that's a fair amount of money. But it's not really affecting your day to day. Whereas this is my only vehicle. It's my livelihood, this takes me to work and back. It takes my wife to work and back. It takes me on holiday. Well, it was going to, but obviously, as I said before, we had to cancel the holiday. We still went, you know, away from here, but we didn't really go anywhere, because I couldn't afford to, because I had to fix this. One of the ways, like, they get stolen, and they normally, they're either taken somewhere and broken down. So if, you, if this got stolen and broken down, you'd certainly see 2007 Bandit 1250 clocks and handlebars and switch gear and all that jazz. For sale on eBay. Or you'd see, you know, wheels for sale, used tyres, stuff like that. Just anything off of this, they strip it and sell it. Because it's less likely to be traced if they've got it in bits. Obviously anything with a number on, they probably won't sell that, so like the frame, or something like that. Maybe if the engine's got a number on, they won't sell the engine, but they'll probably sell parts out of it that don't have numbers on. So obviously that can be traced back to it being stolen. Or the most common way is they're bunged in the back of a van, someone drives down to Dover, and then they fuck off to somewhere in the east of Europe. Some guy fitted a tracking device. Oh, that's something else you can do. Fit a tracking device. Because then you know where it is. If it gets nicked, you can immediately type in whatever it is. It'll go, right, your motorcycle is here. There was a guy, his, I think his Panigale got stolen, it was brand new. He fitted a tracking device to it, it ended up in Lithuania. I believe it did get recovered, which is good. But it shouldn't have to be like that. I was talking to someone the other day about why don't they, you know, check these vans. All right, it's going to add time to queues at Dover, but I'd rather someone quickly went, right, what's in your van? open it up, is it full of immigrants? I mean, if you're taking immigrants out of the country, fine, whatever, but don't take my fucking motorcycle with it, right? Have you got a motorcycle in there? You know, if so, arrest them, dump them down somewhere, check if the van's stolen or whatever, carry on. Next van, next lorry, whatever. But they can't, there's not enough staff to be able to do it in a fair time, because it'll take them 
all day. You'd have to get to Dover a day before you wanted to leave if there were vans getting on the same ferry. It's ridiculous. But I said I'd quite happily do it for free if if I caught a motorcycle thief. I had full right to smash 10 bells of shit out of their ankles and their face with a crowbar or something. And you can't tell me, there's going to be one or two of you who watch this who go, you know what, I'd do it as well. You know damn well you would. So yeah, that's my advice on motorcycle theft, you know, what to do, the effects of it. Since then, because obviously I have the habit of changing bikes every year and a half, I've had this for just over a year and a half, so I thought, ooh, time to change it again. Uh, and I, I can't, I just can't change it. Because the problem is, I either look at stuff that's cheap and go, well, it's going to be really easy to nick, though. Or, I look at stuff, and I, I know I won't enjoy the really cheap stuff. Because I think it's not worth anything, so it won't be so bad. But, it's just going to be, I'm not going to want to go out on it as much. Or, I can get something that I want, like the Street Triple. But then I'm afraid it's going to be nicked. Every, like, I went to Motorcycle Live, and... The amount of bikes I looked at went, I'd have that, but it's going to be really easy to steal, or it's going to be a high target for theft, or something like that. It's ridiculous. That's now ingrained in my head, because this got nicked. And this got found. I can't imagine how the people whose bikes don't get returned feel. Oh, well. Anyway, I'm going to bail out. Cheers.